blockchain makes fraud virtually impossible. Imagine a world where your money is guarded by AI, your government issues digital cash, and a simple algorithm stops bad actors. Sounds like science fiction? Well, buckle up, because thanks to blockchain, this financial fever dream is our new reality. Welcome to the future of money, where your wallet is as digital as your dating life and twice as complicated. Welcome brilliant blockchain explorers and crypto curious cats to another mind-bending episode of our show. I'm your host Theodore, ready to be your guide through the labyrinth of ledgers and the catacombs of cryptocurrencies. Oh, and before my brain decides to wander off into a tangent about the fascinating history of bartering, did you know chickens were once used as currency? Let me introduce our resident experts, Gwen, our blockchain whisperer, and Charlie, our cryptocurrency cartographer. Today, my dear digital pioneers, we're diving headfirst into the world of blockchain and its impact on, well, everything. From AI-powered fraud detection that never sleeps, unlike me during a crypto bull run, to government-issued digital currencies that sound suspiciously like something out of a dystopian novel, I definitely started writing but got distracted from finishing. So, synapse up, my cherished cognitive explorers. Whether you're a crypto whale, a blockchain newbie, or just someone who's wondered why your computer-savvy neighbor won't stop talking about mining, spoiler, not the kind with pickaxes, this episode is your golden ticket to understanding the digital gold rush of our time. And remember, this is episode 16 of our AI and art and creative industry series, part of an entire day exploring creative realms and professional growth. Today, we're seeing how blockchain is painting a whole new picture of finance and creativity. Let's embark on this digital odyssey and see if we can decode the future of money before my attention span decides to check the latest crypto prices again. All right, ready to dive into the world of crypto and blockchain? Let's do it. Looks like you've been swimming in a sea of crypto articles, from hot tips to deep dives on blockchain. Yeah, it sounds like someone's trying to separate the signal from the noise. Exactly. And maybe even get a glimpse into the future of finance, right? Absolutely. It's definitely a fascinating time for it. Speaking of fascinating, that article you sent five low-cost cryptos mm -hmm. caught my eye. October 2024, huh? A lot of buzz about that date. Yeah, like everyone's trying to predict the next big boom, the next Bitcoin. CYBRO, FTT, Aptos, all these names have been floating around. What do you make of it? It's easy to get caught up in the hype, especially with predictions of a bull run. Right, like everyone wants to be in the know, right? Get in early. But remember, market cycles are a roller coaster. Think back to the dot-com boom and bust. Lots of noise then, too. So are you saying we should be wary of all this October 2024 hype? Wary? Maybe not. Cautious. Definitely. Remember, the real revolution back then came from understanding the Internet's potential, not just chasing quick gains. So with crypto, it's more about understanding the underlying technology, not just picking the next big thing. Exactly. The technology in this case is blockchain. That's the game changer. And what's really interesting is it's not just about crypto anymore, is it? Not even close. We're seeing major players like SWIFT, the global banking network, getting involved with blockchain. Wait, really? SWIFT? That's a big deal. What are they doing with blockchain? They're planning to launch live trials for crypto transactions in 2025. Wow. So even the institutions are taking this seriously. Okay, so we've got this potentially huge date on the horizon, October 2024, and established players like SWIFT entering the game. It's a fascinating time to be watching this space unfold. For sure. But before we go full on blockchain, let's rewind for a second. What is driving this October 2024 hype in the first place? What's so special about that date? It's a combination of factors, really. You've got the Bitcoin halving cycle, which historically has been correlated with price surges. Then you've got growing institutional adoption of crypto, regulatory developments in various countries. So a lot of moving pieces. Exactly. And overall, there's a growing sentiment that blockchain is moving from the fringes to the mainstream. All eyes are on crypto right now. Like everyone's waiting to see what happens next. And that anticipation itself can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Interesting. But even with all that hype, you're still saying it's crucial to look beyond that, right? Absolutely. 
Understanding blockchain is key, not just for spotting potential investments, but for grasping the bigger technological shift happening right now. Okay, so let's unpack that. Let's talk blockchain. This other article you sent, Blockchain in 2024, paints a pretty exciting picture. But first, back to basics. What exactly is blockchain? Imagine a digital ledger, kind of like a giant spreadsheet that records every transaction. Okay, I'm with you so far. But instead of being controlled by one central authority, like a bank, it's distributed across a network of computers, a vast network. So it's like everyone has a copy of this ledger, constantly verifying and updating it. That's the basic idea. And it's that decentralized structure that makes blockchain so secure. No single point of failure. Even if one computer goes down, the others keep the system running. Okay, that makes sense. But how does it actually prevent someone from, you know, messing with the ledger? changing transaction details or something. That's where cryptography comes in. Specifically, something called a hash function. A hash function, right. Think of it like a digital fingerprint for each transaction. Welcome back to The Deep Dive. Every time a new transaction is added, it gets this unique fingerprint and is linked to the previous transaction. So it's a chain of these fingerprints. Exactly. A chain of tamper-proof digital fingerprints. If someone tries to alter a transaction, even a tiny bit, it changes the fingerprint breaking the chain. And everyone on the network would know, right? Yeah. Because they all have that copy of the ledger. Exactly. It's incredibly secure because of that transparency. Which is a big part of what makes blockchain so revolutionary, right? That transparency. Absolutely. Traditional systems often require us to trust third parties with our data and transactions, but with blockchain, Everything is out in the open, verifiable by anyone. Interesting. So it's like the Wild West of finance is becoming the most transparent system ever. In a way, yeah. Okay, and this blockchain in 2024 article, it goes way beyond just Bitcoin. What are some of the most interesting applications you're seeing? This article mentions everything from digital identity to entire supply chains. It even talks about this WorldCoin project where they're scanning people's irises. Yeah, I read about that. To create unique IDs on the blockchain. Like that feels like something out of a sci-fi movie. It's definitely pushing the boundaries. The idea is to create a global ID system that's completely verifiable. Which could be revolutionary, I guess, for things like banking, voting. Exactly. Yeah. But... Like any new technology, there are concerns. Privacy being a big one. Imagine that iris data getting hacked. Yeah, not a fan of that thought. It <laughs> makes you wonder about the trade-offs, you know? Okay. <laughs> but let's move on to something a little less uh, invasive. What about this whole supply chain application for blockchain? That seems like a natural fit. It is. We're already seeing it happen. Companies using blockchain to track products all the way from, like, farm to table or factory to store. So you could trace like every step a product took along the way. Yeah, and that helps verify where something came from, reduce fraud. You can even prevent things like contaminated food from reaching people. Wow, that's huge. Okay, what else is in this treasure trove of an article? What other blockchain applications are they talking about? Well, it also talks about storing public records on the blockchain. Things like land registries, medical records, even voting systems. So instead of relying on systems that can be tampered with or that are prone to errors or whatever. You have this immutable record accessible to everyone. And secure. Right. Right. Which could be huge for transparency, fighting corruption, all that good stuff. Exactly. And it gets even more interesting. Remember that article, Blockchain in 2024? Yeah. Well, it talks about the convergence of blockchain and artificial intelligence. Oh, yeah, AI. It feels like those two are always popping up together. But how do they actually work together? What's the connection? Well, AI can make blockchain even more powerful. For example, AI algorithms can analyze huge amounts of blockchain data to detect fraud as it happens. In real time. Yeah. It's like having an AI security guard watching over the entire network 24-7. OK, that's pretty impressive. What else can AI do for blockchain? Well, scalability has been a challenge for some blockchains, and AI can help with that too. It can make the whole system faster, more efficient. But it's like AI is turbocharging blockchain's potential. That's one way to put it. But I have to ask, are there any downsides to this partnership? Are there risks to combining these two technologies? That's a very important question, because while AI can definitely enhance security, it can also be used to create more sophisticated attacks. Like what kind of attacks are we talking about? It's hard to say specifically, but as AI gets more advanced, hackers could use it to exploit vulnerabilities in blockchain systems. 
It's like an arms race. Both sides are constantly trying to outsmart each other. So it's like a double-edged sword. And what about privacy? If AI is analyzing all this blockchain data, could it uncover more than we bargained for? It's possible. The more data we feed into AI, the more it learns, the more it can potentially infer about people, even if the data itself is anonymized. It really highlights the need for ethical considerations in all of this, you know, responsible AI development. It's like we're stepping into uncharted territory here, and we need to be really careful about how we proceed. I think that's a good way to put it. Speaking of uncharted territory, let's talk about the future of finance. We've got SWIFT experimenting with crypto, central banks exploring digital currencies. It feels like a financial revolution is brewing. It certainly does. That article about SWIFT's crypto trials, that's a prime example. They're aiming to bridge the gap between traditional finance and the crypto world, which could make things like cross-border payments much faster and cheaper. Right. And then you've got all these central banks looking into central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. It's like every country wants their own digital dollar, their own digital euro. It's fascinating. CBDCs have the potential to offer greater financial inclusion, especially for the unbanked. But they also raise concerns about privacy and government control over money. It's a lot to wrap your head around. And then you've got companies like PayPal enabling crypto transactions. And Robinhood might partner with Revolut on a stablecoin. It seems like the lines between traditional finance and crypto are getting really blurry. They are. What we're seeing is a convergence of technologies, a convergence of financial systems. And it's still very early days. The next few years will be crucial in shaping how this all plays out. It's exciting, but also a little daunting. Where does this all leave our listener who's swimming in this sea of information? What are the key takeaways, would you say? I think the most important one is this. Blockchain is here to stay. It's not just about speculation or trying to get rich quick. It's a fundamental shift in how we approach trust, transparency, and the flow of value. So it's not just about picking the right cryptocurrency. It's about understanding the bigger picture. Exactly. And that means staying curious, learning about different blockchain platforms, and thinking about how this technology might affect your own industry. And pay attention to regulatory changes, too. The Dubai regulator's warning about the risks of crypto is a good reminder that this space is still very much evolving. This has been an incredible deep dive. I feel like we've only just scratched the surface. There's always more to explore. But hopefully this has given our listeners a foundation to navigate this world. And to our listeners, we'll leave you with this. If blockchain really is the future of finance, what role will you play in shaping it? Well, my esteemed encryption enthusiasts and blockchain believers, We've reached the end of our journey through the decentralized dominion of digital finance. Feeling like your brain just went through a hard fork? Don't worry, that's just the sweet sound of your neurons trying to process the fact that your money might soon have more in common with your smartphone than with that crumpled bill in your pocket. So, what's your take? Are you ready to dive into the crypto deep end, or are you clutching your physical wallet a little tighter? Maybe you're somewhere in the middle, seeing both the digital utopia and the potential cyberpunk dystopia in this brave new world of finance. If this episode sparked a revolution in your neural pathways, don't keep that digital dividend to yourself. Share it with that friend who still thinks blockchain is a fancy Lego set, or that relative who's convinced crypto is just magic internet money. Drop your thoughts in the comments. Are you team bring on the digital dough? or keep your blockchains off my buck. Your voice matters in this grand experiment we call the future of finance. Remember, every financial revolution in history started with someone asking, what if? So keep questioning, keep exploring, and who knows, maybe you'll be the one to create the next big cryptocurrency. Just promise me you'll name it something cool, like Theodore Coin. It has a nice ring to it, don't you think? Until next time, stay curious, stay skeptical, and for the love of all that is decentralized, don't forget your private keys. This is Theodore, signing off from the intersection of bits and billions. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a hot date with my hardware wallet. It's the only relationship where I'm truly in control of my assets.